Welcome to In My Opinion for Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns. The Lightning Returns stars who else but Lightning herself. The world has been struck with chaos, leaving the damage and people who don't age but can still die. Lightning has been chosen by the big man upstairs and gives her 13 days to gather up the souls on the planet and lead them to a brand new world, with the promise of bringing her sister Sarah back to her as a reward. On the way, Lightning encounters some familiar faces during her mission, and even a new mysterious character named Lumina. This game is part of a trilogy, so if you're jumping in for the first time, you may be a bit lost. But with the help of some flashback cutscenes and dialogues that you get in the game, you can get an okay understanding of the basis of the world and history. I enjoy the story for the most part. Lightning is a strong female lead. While she is shown to be very serious, she does display other emotions throughout the game. It was also nice to see the rest of the cast again and what they've been up to. Nothing was really confusing and it was interesting to see how the chaos spell affected everyone's life. However, I do have one complaint and that's one of the story's main plot points. They keep pushing that Lightning has no emotions, that she feels no sadness, no joy and so forth. But yet there are clear instances that she displays emotion. I don't know if this is something lost in translation or maybe just crappy writing. It's just something that kept nagging at me and did hurt my overall enjoyment of the story since they kept bringing it up. It felt like the plot point was at odds with itself. Lightning Returns is different than its predecessors as it's kind of more of an action JRPG. You still have to wait for your ATB middle to fulfill to do certain actions, but you have full control of Lightning's movements. You can also guard freely, and if you block just at the right time, you can lessen your damage and even stun your enemy sometimes. With this new freedom of movement and control, it made the combat feel even more involved than usual. By using the enemy's weaknesses, you are able to stagger them. This temporarily stuns them and allows you to deflect even more damage than usual, and it can even trigger a status effect. This adds a little more strategy to the battles, and fun as well. If you fall in battle, you have the option to flee. Doing so will put you back exactly where you were before the fight. However, you lose an hour of your time. You were able to escape for now, but it lost you an hour of the world's time. Enemies spawn randomly around the map, but you can run away if you're not in the mood for a fight. You can also catch them off guard and hit them for a battle advantage. Don't watch out, since they can do the same exact thing to you. There are also chaos fields that randomly appear. These are big black spears that make the monsters you're fighting much stronger, but at the same time, it increases your rewards for winning. It's sort of a high risk, high reward situation. After you win, there are little purple eggs you can collect and sell to certain merchants. Most enemies can also become extinct. Once you kill a certain amount, a kind of purple pink version appears, known as the last one. This one will be tougher than the usual version, but if you kill it, you can get some sweet rewards. Once taking out that monster, it will no longer appear throughout the rest of the game. Monster drops do get a bit better after a certain amount of days, so maybe you should think a bit before completely wiping them out. However, they do get a bit stronger as well. So, end of the day, is up to you. A new mechanic added to this series is called the Garb System. The Garb System allows you to customize three outfits Lightning can switch to on the fly. Garbs, like any other equipment, can raise your stats, such as giving you a higher ATB meter, more strength, and so forth. Some of the garbs even have special skills attached to them like gaining health after killing an enemy. Each outfit can be equipped with four actions such as different types of guards, physical attacks, magic attacks, and debuffs. Some garbs do come with actions that cannot be changed, so do keep that in mind. The guard system gives you the freedom to customize how you want to play and handle each situation, while looking cool to boot. I like the fact they can add a little personal touch to each garb. You allow to change the colors and the name of the garb. Though the color customization varies garb to garb. You can also add a little accessory called adornments to lightning. You can make it look as silly or cool as you want. And the best thing is it all shows during gameplay. One of the biggest changes is that now you are timed each day to complete your missions. Once the clock strikes 6, you are then sent back to the art to deposit your saved souls. I'm not gonna lie, when I first heard about this, I gave one big ugh. And after playing through the whole game, it turned into more of a, eh. It's still kind of annoying to be timed, especially in an RPG. Some areas don't open to a certain time frame, and the same goes for some side quest NPCs. Also, when Lightning is conversating with Hope from the Ark 
about what's going on in that moment, I couldn't just stand and hear it, since I have to be careful with my time. Thankfully, it's not all doom and gloom, since you can get EP during fights. EP allows you to use special abilities such as healing, teleporting if you don't feel like walking to the train, slowing down time in combat to lay the smack down, and more. Though the most important EP ability is called Chronostasis. This ability will be your buddy, your pal, your amigo. Why you ask? Well that's because it stops time. It may be just for a little bit, but it does help a lot. If you can manage your EP well, you should be able to handle everything you need just fine. Let me throw you a little tip. Each map has a certain area that spawns enemies that give you 2 EP after each defeat. You can beat these guys over and over again to gain EP if needed. I was able to do all the main quests and a big chunk of the side quests and still have 6 days left to do whatever else I needed to do. You also have the option to sprint, saving you some time. But be careful, since if you run out of stamina while sprinting, you can't attack and start a fight, and the enemy can get a drop on you. The level up system works differently here, as you don't get XP for killing monsters, instead you get money, items, and skill drops from them. The way you raise the stats by doing main quests and side quests. There are two different types of side quests. One is a canvas of prayers where Chocolina has a bunch of side quests for you to do. You are able to take as many as you want at a time, and once you get the needed items, you can return to the board and complete them. The other type of side quests you get are from the NPCs that you talk to around the world. These are more interesting compared to the canvas missions since they actually have a story attached to them, such as a person being trapped in a cat's body to lightning reuniting the family again. It adds personality to the world itself, showing us the life of some of these NPCs have led since the Chaos Leak. However, I kind of wish the NPCs themselves were more unique in looks for these missions. Some are just the same as that character with glasses or really badly done facial hair. You can always check on your progress on each mission in your menus if you forget what you were doing. The game also lets you know what was your last mission you've done in each area, maybe main or side quests, with a little synopsis as well. The game offers arena fights as well. You only get money or EP for it, but you do get whatever item the fight is advertising. So if you want some haste potions, just come back at the right time frame and start getting some. The only real negative is you lose 10 minutes for each fight, so be sure to manage your time. Of course you have your usual shops as well, you got your item shop to buy your healing potions and such, though you can only hold a certain amount of items so choose wisely. Your outfit is to buy more garbs and adornments for lightning, you have your forge which allows you to buy weapons, shields and gauntlets, you can buy enemy gods for merchants which sell you the enemy's weakness and item drops instead of firing off for yourself, and finally you have your sorcery shop which allows you to combine skills to make them stronger and later on even upgrade them to a higher level. There are also inns that you can rest and fast forward time if you don't feel like waiting around for the clock to tick away. The shops do get newer items as the days pass by, so splurging your cash all at once isn't such a good idea. Square has also added a certain social aspect to the game. You can upload battle results, add a comment, and even an item for sale. You can also take an in-game pick and post them up. You can see other gamers posts as well represented by the dark blue text above an NPC. You can customize it that you only see pictures that show what you're currently up to with the story, to avoid spoilers of course. Each of the four maps are varied from the lush green lands of the wildlands to the sandy dead dunes, each brimming with people and making the world more believable. The game also contains the day and night cycle, so if you want you can stand to see the sunset. The maps themselves are also big and leave room for you to explore and find items. The good thing is, the bigger maps have a quick way to travel such as the wildlands letting you get your own chocobo to ride around the fields and even help out in battle. While the areas are nice and big, I did notice some iffy textures here and there. The character models themselves from the main cast at least look great, while some of the NPCs look a little mad at times. You'll notice it even more when you're doing side quests. 
Random NPCs also have the habit of blocking your view of when you're talking to someone. Though thankfully it's not really a common occurrence. While the game still looks good, it seems the quality of the graphics actually went down from the first two. I mean look at this dog. Yeah, that ain't right. Square still does shine in the CGI cutscene department, as you can tell from the intro. The voice cast returns from the previous games, which is a good thing, since I felt they did a great job in the past. But if I'm gonna get a second lease on life, maybe it's time I stopped living in the shadows. Right, Lightning? <laughs> it also helps that the NPCs have good voice actors as well, though some can overreact and get some weird results. One of the glaring flaws in the game is the frame rate issues. While you're running around the world, the game seems to have a hard time handling everything that's going on and chugs at times, hurting the overall presentation. It can also take some time for some of the NPCs to load while entering a new area. Thankfully, it runs pretty smooth during combat. I put in about 60 hours in Lightning Returns, and I enjoyed every minute of it. The combat system was fast and fun and kept me involved. The garb system was a nice addition and added some flavor to the game itself with the customization of looks and playstyle. It also helps that you can save at any moment in the game, not having to worry about finding a safe spot. The story itself wasn't bad. I've been with the cast since the first game and it was nice to see what they've been up to and how this story finally ends. The new character Lumina kept me interested as well as I wanted to find out who was she and what was her role in all this. As I mentioned before, the only really annoying bump was the whole lightning emotions thing, since it conflicted with what I was seeing through the rest of the game. There are a good amount of side quests to do, though I still wish there was a little more. There's even an extra dungeon if you get an extra day on your playthrough. There's also a new game plus option in which stuff like equipment, levels, and certain items carry over to your next playthrough. You can also pick any difficulty you want from the start, so if you don't want it to be hard, you can just pick easy. One of my worries with this trilogy was that Final Fantasy XIII had closure, and that they would botch it up with this game. And thankfully, that is not the case here. I hope you enjoy my thoughts on this game, and for gamers sake, keep gaming.